So the Nothing Phone 2 here has finally officially launched after an awful lot of teasing. You can pre-order yours right now from 319 quid. It's a direct replacement for the original Nothing Phone. Not quite as spangly or as expensive as the Nothing Phone 2. So let's whip the two ear out of the box, see what you get. I'm going to slap my SIM in one of them. And then through the magical wonders of video editing, we'll zip forward in time five days to see what I reckon. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So you've got a choice of two colours for the Nothing Phone 2 ear, black or white. Nothing particularly revolutionary. Let's start with the black. Well, isn't this exciting? Hopefully everyone who hasn't already clicked off the video will agree. So inside the box, you've of course got a Nothing Phone 2A. You've also got one of Nothing's funky trademark USB cables. They're a wee bit see-through at the end there. Oh, and a just as transparent pokey SIM pin effort. And that's everything. I'm assuming it's the same situation here for the white model. I completely f***ed that up, didn't I? And yes, indeed it is. Woo! So, welcome to the future. Five days of the future. Hangover's still definitely a thing. And so far, spoiler alert, very much like in the Nothing Phone 2A. It's just £319 for the base model, otherwise a bit extra if you want to pimp it out with more storage and RAM. And this is said pimped out model. Like the Nothing Phone 2 and pretty much every other smartphone these days, it's yet another 6.7 inch big boy. Even though you've got skinnier bezels surrounding that display, it's not exactly one-hand friendly. I definitely use the one-handed mode quite a copious amount. And go, you can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere, etc. Apart from that, very much business as usual around front. However, it's around the arse end where the Nothing Phone 2A has changed up quite a bit. Of course, no real surprises as Nothing has teased the design quite a bit before the launch. So those cameras have now shifted into a central position and they're gazing out at you like mini and eyes. It's a pleasingly subtle camera bump as well, only sticks out ever so slightly. And as you can see there, only the three glyph lights now are paired down from previous models. And of course it's distinctive nothing design through and through, from that transparent back so you can see all the various elements just inside, including all the teeny screws and everything, right down to that dinky dot matrix Brandon. This is all a lot more clear and obvious on the white model versus the black, but both the black and the white model do get quite smudgy when you begin to finger them. It's probably slightly more obvious, all the greasy prints and everything here on the black model, they do tend to sort of blend in a bit more on the white. But on the flip side, any hairs and bits of fluff and stuff that get stuck to the white model are much more obvious than on the black. Let me tell you, this thing absolutely adores pubes. It's got some sort of crazy magnetic attraction. I don't even know how there's that many pubes kicking about. If I shed that many myself, I'd be as bald down there as I am up there. Unless there's some sort of pube demon that creeps into my house at night, willfully scattering its goods before buggering off again. The Nothing Phone 2A still sports those iPhone-style edges, though it seems a bit skinnier. And I really like how the volume buttons and that power button stand out here on the white model. It's a shame we didn't have an inverse type situation on the black version. And it is also slightly annoying how you can't really use that camera bump as a finger shelf because it's so dinky and quite rounded. It just, your finger just slides off basically. And that back end now constructed from polycarbonate rather than glass. Makes the phone a bit lighter. Sadly not completely scratch resistant though. I've got a few dinky little nicks here at the bottom edge. And that's just from five days of use. So as sad as it seems to maybe have to slap a cover on this thing, it's probably a good idea if you want it to stay in good nick. And then I really like the textured matte finish to the edge in there. And then it's Gorilla Glass 5 apparently up front. But you do get pre-installed screen protector as well. And this phone is IP54 water and dust resistant. So overall about two and a half on the Statham scale. Now slapped on the Nothing Phone 2 here, you do of course have the latest Android 14 with Colin Core's very own Nothing OS 2.5.3 smushed lovingly on top. And you've got some respectable software support here as well. You've got three OS updates guaranteed and four years of security patches. Yeah, pretty solid for an affordable mid-ranger. And when you first boot up your shiny new Nothing Phone 2 here, you do actually get presented with a choice. You can either have a perfectly stock Android experience on here, otherwise you can go with that Nothing OS veneer. I, of course, wanted the full Nothing experience, and it hasn't really changed up too much from the likes of the Nothing Phone 2. As you can see, the main difference is that most of your icons appear in black and white. Unfortunately, a few not quite supported, so as you can see, there are some colour options still stuffed in there. 
And as before, I really like this approach because it does mean you're less drawn to these icons. You're less likely to go, oh, I'll just have a quick tap on that and waste 20 minutes of your life doom scrolling or whatever. Just like the year team, you get in there, you do what you need to do, and then you get the hell out. And of course, nothing does love a widget as well. You've got a choice of 22 of the buggers right here. This covers all types of different options, the likes of the camera, various clock options. Of course, if you've got a pair of nothing earbuds, then you can fast pair and just check on the battery life. And I do like the screen time widget as well, which was your nice happy phone if you haven't spent more than your allotted time gazing at the screen. And as always, it's just a nice consistent design as well. All of the apps, the settings menu and everything all it is to that nothing dot matrix style. It's certainly one of the more distinctive launches out there when many other launches are kind of becoming variations of each other. And it all just feels very smooth and responsive as well. I can't remember a single time I've been using the Nothing Phone 2E and it's felt a little bit juddery or like it's really struggling. Not that much new stuff in this version of Nothing OS, at least on the surface level, but if you tap your way into the wallpapers section, you will see there's a wallpaper studio which, massive shock surprise, can generate you a wallpaper using the wonderful technology of AI. Apparently this feature will be coming to the likes of the Nothing Phone 2 and stuff as well, so yippee hooray. Let's see what this thing spaffs out. There we have a bit of graphic terrain action. If that's what you fancy, I'm just going to stick with my geeky animation anagans. And when you're setting a wallpaper, as usual, you can add the atmosphere section, which basically just blurs everything out. So I'm not really sure what the point of that is. Otherwise, you can do the old nothing glass effect. And then, yes, that glyph lighting has been reduced to just a trio of lights now, but that still does the job. As always, fully customizable within the Nothing Fun 2A's settings, so you can slightly tweak the brightness. Got a selection of 10 Nothing Fun 2A ringtones, making full use of that trio of lights. A decent selection for your notifications as well. And I do like how you've got that essential notifications feature back in action. And I've got it set up so if I get a WhatsApp message through, one of the glyph lights stays on just so I'm aware there is a message waiting. Got the likes of flip to glyph as well, so you can just place the phone face down and that will silence it so you'll just get the glyph flashing. And one of my main complaints with this on previous models was that if you placed it on a surface that wasn't completely flat, it often didn't turn on the glyph lighting. But thankfully, this seems to have been sorted. The 2A, you can slap it down on a sofa, something a bit more uneven. And it tends to recognise it and turn on those lights. You've got the usual scheduling shenanigans. You've got that glyph progress as well. Still rather limited support, unfortunately, but you can get it on the go for Google Calendar these days. Not particularly helpful, though. I do prefer the glyph timer. You can set it for any amount of time you like between 15 seconds and one hour. And then when you're ready, just stick it face down. And as you can see, this top left LED will slowly drain or not so slowly if you set a timer for 30 seconds like I just have. And it's a good way of quickly glancing over and seeing roughly how long you've got left on any given timer without being too distracting. And as always, you've got that glyph composer if you fancy yourself a bit of a daft punk or a more up to date dance band from the last 20 years. Now, the Nothing Phone 2 is display, as I mentioned before, same size as the Nothing Phone 2 and every phone in 2024 to 6.7 inch. And of course, it's an AMOLED screen as well as you'd expect at this sort of price. 2412 by 1084 pixel resolution. So visuals reasonably crisp, despite the fact it's quite a spacious screen. You've got 10 bit color support here, although sadly no HDR playback support in the likes of Netflix, at least not yet. We got the usual pretty crispy contrast. The colors are set to alive by default. Uh, you can bump that down to standard. Doesn't make a massive amount of difference as far as I can tell. It's certainly a bright enough panel as well. Peaks at 1300 nits apparently or 1100 nits outdoors. And I had no issues with visibility. Auto brightness sometimes a little slow to react but nothing to really complain about. You've still got that centrally positioned selfie cam orifice which barely intrudes on the action when you're watching a movie or playing a game. And while this isn't LTPO tech, it can scale between 30 and 120 Hz refresh. You can do that on its lonesome with the default dynamic setting, otherwise you can bump it up to 120 Hz full time if you wish. And naturally you've got yourself a stereo speaker set up here on the Nothing Phone 2A and it's perfectly good for just kicking back with a bit of bold YouTube twat action. Bump up that volume, see what we get. The exclusive design and features are inspired by Genshin's Qi Xing character. And apparently the tagline for this phone is exceed the speed of lightning. And indeed I often do. Just ask my wife. So yeah, the clarity is absolutely fine. On top volume you'll still be able to hear what's going on even if it's a fairly noisy environment. 
Thankfully, bugger all complains with the Bluetooth streaming on the Nothing Phone 2 I was wandering around London in the sunshine this weekend, which meant, of course, every other bugger in the entire vicinity was out and about. And yeah, absolutely no judders or anything like that. Nothing interrupting that stream. Now for the performance, well, this time around, Nothing has decided to go with the MediaTek and its Dimensity 7200 Pro. Now this is actually a custom version of the chipset previously seen stuffed inside of Xiaomi's Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. MediaTek apparently built this model exclusively for the Nothing Phone 2 a making it more efficient as well as decently beefy. And certainly the everyday experience, nice and smooth, as I mentioned before, helped along by the fact that the Nothing OS launcher seems pleasingly efficient and light. But it was the game inside of things that really had me intrigued and naturally good Genshin Impact was what I used to test it. Bumped it right up to the highest detail settings at 60 frames per second to really test it out. And I gotta say I expected to see a fair few little stumbles and judders here and there but I was pleasantly surprised that Nothing Fun 2A handled Genshin on that highest graphic settings without absolutely filling its Y fronts. That gameplay remained pleasingly fluid, even if I've been smashing trolls in the mush for about an hour or so. You got a big old vapor chamber, you got a graphite frame, all kinds of clever pen shenanigans to get all the heat to bugger right off. So yeah, even gaming on Genshin for over an hour on those highest graphic settings, the top end of the Nothing Fun 2A got slightly warm to the touch and that was basically it. And for the battery life, well, you've got a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell stuffed in here. That's bigger than the previous two Nothing Phones. And it certainly does the job. There was only one day of the previous five where I almost managed to kill it before bedtime. And that involved over an hour of Genshin Impact action, over an hour of Skyping, lots of camera testing. On a more typical day with around sort of five to six hours of screen on time, a mixture of use, you know, a bit of video streaming, a bit of audio streaming, all that good stuff. Well, I typically had around sort of 25 to 30% battery remaining at the end of the day. And when you do need to power back up again, it's 45 watt wide charging, so not the nippiest you'll find at this sort of price. You'll have to look at the likes of a Redmi or a Poco for that, but still reasonably quick. No wireless charging support, however, that has been culled completely for the Nothing Phone 2 way but Nothing does reckon that the battery longevity has been improved. So over three years, you'll only see a minor degradation, even if you're charging it up every single night. And last up for this Nothing Phone 2A unboxing and five day review, let's have a look at the slightly creepy optics. And what you've got here is a dual lens setup. That primary shooter is a Samsung GN9 sensor with optical image stabilization built in. And by default, this captures photos at 12 megapixels. You can boost up to 50 megs if you want. And I was generally quite happy with my test shots. You do see some saturation in brighter light, but colors otherwise appear quite close to what you'll see with your peepers. And in tricky contrast, you do have Nothing's new Ultra XDR mode for the ultimate HDR shots. This captures eight pics at different dynamic levels, then combines them into a tasty HDR pie. So even if you're basically shooting into the light, you'll get similar results to an iPhone. It's not a natural looking pick, but those darker areas are brightly reproduced, while lighter elements aren't too blown out. Now shooting living subjects can be slightly more complicated in ambient light. As usual with mid-range phones, you'll get blurred results if the buggers won't stay still. But in better light, the Nothing Phone 2A is a pleasingly nippy snapper. These shots are taken at the one time zoom level with that Ultra XDR mode active. And these right here are taking a two times zoom again with XDR. The portrait mode is generally reliable for adding some bokeh style smudging if you're into all of that. And while there's no dedicated night mode, the Nothing Phone 2 a can prolong the exposure in low light to brighten things up. So you'll get crispy detail and again pretty good tones as long as your hands are still. Alternatively, those glyph lights also work in a pinch as a funky sort of flash for night shots. As for the second lens slapped on the back, well, that is an ultra-wide angle affair using Samsung's GN1 sensor, I believe it is. And though despite sticking with Samsung for both sensors, the ultra-wide does still produce warmer tones. It's alright, pretty much standard fare at this price. And then for your video type shenanigans, where you can shoot at 1080p, full HD, otherwise 4K at 30 frames per second. You can bump up to 60 frames per second at Ultra HD though. And for the majority of my test video, the Nothing Phone 2 a did its job. The focus is pretty fast to react to sudden changes, those visuals are detailed enough to look good on a big screen, the audio is generally captured cleanly in the immediate surroundings, 
things only really get muddy at a distance or when there's a lot of random environmental noise. Now, stabilization doesn't give the most natural vibe, but it is good at smoothing out your footage when you're moving and shooting. And I did experience a couple of little issues though, including some short juddery spells when shooting at 4K, which I'm hoping will be blasted by the next camera update. And then for all of your selfie shenanigans, you've got a 32 megapixel front facing snapper here on the Nothing Phone 2 here. I believe it's the exact same tech as the Nothing Phone 2. And this does a perfectly decent job. You've got natural looking snaps with all of those lovely crease lines captured in perfect detail in brighter light. At least things get a bit softer in ambient light. Plus, of course, a reliable portrait mode to wipe out all of those weird background lurkers. And if you want to shoot yourself a bit of video using that selfie cam, well, it maxes out at full HD, sadly, no 4K option here. But again, the Nothing Phone 2 here seems to do the job perfectly for Skype and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Mike's do a decent job of picking up your voice, even at a distance. And that right there, my lovelies, is what I reckon of the Nothing Phone 2 here after using it as my full-time phone for five days now. And I really, really like it. It's a solid all-round package, especially good if you're sold on the whole Nothing ethos, the Nothing OS launcher, the Glyph Lite and all that good stuff. And if you're a gamer, you'll be very happy with the performance here too. I do still prefer the camera tech on the Pixel 7 here, so if photography is your primary concern, then maybe check that out instead. But overall, gotta say, gets my spurt of approval. Anyway, that's what I reckon of the Nothing Phone 2 here. It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you. Oh, these goddamn pubes, honestly.